variable. How about office space? Office space, the longer in terms of number of months we, we uh, sell, the more money we pay, right? That's true, it's variable in time. But is it possible that if we don't sell any house in a month, do we still have to pay the $2,000? Possible. I mean, in fact, a must. What if we sell 10 houses in that month? Do we pay 2,000 times 10? No, we still pay 2,000. So since it doesn't, you know, it, it's not altered by the change in the variable of uh, quantity being sold, it is fixed relative to Q. It is independent of Q. Uh, how about this? Supplies, utilities, e leasing of equipment. More houses we sell doesn't mean we pay more, right? So it is independent of Q. It is dependent on month, but not dependent on Q. So, so it's fixed. Salesperson commission is $2,000 per house. More houses sold, more commission to be paid to salespeople, right? So variable. Salary, more houses we sell, president still gets $10,000, not more. So fixed. So after classifying all the costs correctly, then we are able to add up the total variable costs, right, with the right coefficient. Uh, then multiply by x the quantity of houses that we must sell, right, in order to solve the equation. Plus fixed cost, which is the sum of all the quantities that do not depend on uh, x in this case here. Total revenue that we can get will be the number of houses times the house uh, selling price, in the unit house selling price. So revenue minus total costs will be our uh, model here and we set it to equal to zero. Why? Because to find profits we just apply this model. Much like to find the starting bit we just apply the expression earlier on in the example. But we are trying to find break even. So we don't have like a hard and fast rule. To find break even we need to know what is x. So by definition we need to uh, uh, break even is that special value of x such that profit equals to zero. So we simply set it to equal to zero. In other words, total revenue equals to total cost. And I believe this equation should be straightforward enough for uh, almost anyone to watching this video to try to solve it. So we get 10,000 X is 40,000. Therefore, X equals to four. All right. So of course, then we can answer uh, various uh, questions from there. And we can uh, talk about... Uh, profits and all that. But wait, this question about profit doesn't really care about what is the value of x. So what's the point of finding out about the break-even quantity? What's the whole point? Well, the break-even quantity allows us to have a feel, isn't it? Yeah, That if you're having a startup, uh, a, a real estate development, a business, a retail operations, you want the break-even point, that means the quantity of, of items being sold, to be achievable, that you have confidence in, in attaining that, right? So if this number is 4 and you have um, 50 houses to sell, do we have confidence in getting it done? Should we have be having high morale to get it done? Sure, right? So it is quite easily attainable. But suppose you your, your whole project has five bungalows and you're supposed to break even at four bungalows or else you will have negative profits, isn't it? Yeah, by definition. So if that's the case, do you think it's a risky uh, proposal? Yeah, that you can at most get zero profit after selling 80% of your, of your, you know, uh, productions, your bungalows. Well, it doesn't mean that it is a losing proposition. It just means that we have another reference point to think about. Should we, you know, maybe times are bad. So even if this is a, a very uphill climb, we will charge ahead. Or times are good. Why should we be taking up so much risk when there are so many other possible options for us to spend our time on and money on, right? So all these are for us to uh, have additional pivots to consider. So on this chart, it's a graphical way of showing a very simple model, nevertheless visually very helpful. So anything to the left of 4 right, will be uh, not yet break even, meaning we are still having negative profits, where the cost curve, the rate curve, rate line, is above the revenue line. 
therefore showing negative profits. And as we move past four, the more houses we sell, we get higher, more and more revenue, the blue line, and it's on top of the total cost line. The we still incur more and more costs because of variability, right? The variable costs. Uh, but the vertical delta represents the accumulated profits. So as the, uh, as the two lines widen in their gaps, the more uh, accumulated profits that we will be retaining. So that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, the, the bigger the gradient between the two, the better we have, the quicker we get profits uh, in, in, in that sense. So think about this crosshair here, right? The break-even is four. Before we sell the number of break-even houses, what's the mood in the office? Gloomy, dark, uh, serious, right? If you have an idea to develop another condominium project, would you want to bring it up to the management when our number of houses sold is still below break-even? Well, the management will be busy thinking about how to at least get to break even point first, right? So think about marketing first, think about uh, promoting the sales first rather than another project. Yeah, so, so the focus of attention should be on uh, attaining break even. But suppose we are now after break even, we sold six houses already, right? Are we having a lot of profits? No, not yet. But what is the mood in the office? you know, positive, happy, relaxed, right? Thinking about next project, uh, encouraged, right? So uh, all these change precisely because we have this number four uh, in our minds up front. Before we start the project, we know four is the magic number that will swing our moods, that will affect our plans. So is this calculation useful? It is of very a uh, huge practical importance, right? Even though the model that we are talking about is simplistic and the mathematics basically not much, right? So it is not about the mathematics that we emphasize in this course. It is more about how we borrow the results from mathematics and cleverly apply them, cleverly model back the business uh, in language of mathematics so that we can take advantage of uh, mathematical know-how and of course because computers work very well with mathematics we can also take advantage of computer uh, technologies to help us quickly arrive at the numerical quantitative solution in the model and then with our expertise our domain knowledge we interpret the result so as to uh, drive us steer us help us optimize our decision making in the business